This is AutoLine Daily, your source for global automotive news. While sales of passenger vehicles in the U.S. dropped slightly in 2019, it was the opposite for big trucks. According to Ward's intelligence, sales of medium and heavy-duty trucks were up a combined 8% in 2019. But there could be trouble brewing. While the Class 8 segment was up 10% for the entire year, sales have actually declined for the past three months. And if that trend continues into this year, it's a bad sign because big trucks can be a leading indicator as to where the economy is heading. And 2019 was an excellent year for automakers in the U.S. market. What with sales topping 17 million units for five years in a row, if you include heavy-duty pickups. But there were some big losers last year. Nissan saw its sales drop nearly 10% as the company is in crisis over the whole Carlos Ghosn affair. Mazda dropped more than 7%, which really has us scratching our heads because the company has a solid lineup of cars. Ford dropped more than 3%, which is partially explained by dropping so many car models, including Focus, Taurus, and C-Max, but mostly explained by the botched launch of the Explorer. GM was down 2.5%, but that was mainly due to the strike by the UAW. Automakers are praying that mobility services, data monetization, and advertising in cars will be worth a gold mine for them by the end of the decade. Faraday Future CEO Karsten Breitfeld gave us his vision of the kind of money they think they can generate. He says that if Faraday could build an owner base of 10 million cars, that would translate into 150 million user hours per day. And he calculates they can earn 30 cents for every use hour. Well, that translates into $45 million a day or about $16 billion a year. Sounds kind of crazy, right? Well, McKinsey did a study a couple of years ago predicting the global market for data monetization in cars could hit $750 billion by the end of the decade. And if they're right, we think it could hit a trillion dollars a few years after that. Hot on the heels of the all-new Chevy Tahoe and Suburban, GMC is showing off the new Yukon and Yukon XL. You're first greeted by massive grills. And like so many other trucks and SUVs, the headlamp assemblies feature large C-clamp running lights. Three engine options will be available. A 5.3 liter V8 comes standard. A 6.2 liter V8 is also available and standard on the Denali trim. And in 2021, customers will also be able to choose GM's new 3-liter inline six-cylinder diesel. All three engines are mated to a 10-speed automatic transmission. Like the Tahoe and Suburban, the Yukons will get an independent rear suspension, which helps improve interior space. But they will also have the option for an electronic limited slip differential and an adaptive air suspension system that can raise two inches off-road, lower two inches, to make getting in and out easier, or lower three quarters of an inch on the highway to improve fuel economy. The interior features a number of premium touches, a large center display screen, and even features a power sliding center console. For the first time, the Yukon will also be offered with the off-road focused AT4 trim, which includes unique tires, underbody skid plates, and a black interior theme with deep red accents. The new Yukon and Yukon XL go on sale this summer. Speaking of GMC, that AT4 trim line must be really popular with customers and making the brand a nice profit. Because with the introduction of the Terrain AT4, GMC now offers the trim on all of its models. It didn't release a lot of information on the Terrain AT4, but all AT4 models have a more rugged exterior look black chrome grille, fog light surrounds, and rear badging, as well as unique interior touches. The Terrain AT4 will be available this fall. Hyundai's luxury brand Genesis is finally adding an SUV to its lineup with the launch of the GV80 in Seoul, South Korea earlier today. 
The design of the SUV was created by the company's design studios in Korea, Germany, and the U.S. The GV80 launches with a 3-liter V6 diesel in South Korea, while two turbocharged gasoline engines will be available shortly after its launch. It's standard with rear-wheel drive, but all-wheel drive is also available. Some exclusive features include a road noise active noise control system that Hyundai debuted in November, and the driver's seat contains seven air cells that help reduce fatigue from a long drive. The GV80 is available now in South Korea. Now it's time to get all of you in on the action. We had a number of comments yesterday that we'd like to respond to. And we're starting with one where we had to slap our foreheads and just say, oh! Class X says, LM002 first. Well, if you don't get the reference, yesterday we said the Urus is Lamborghini's first SUV. As Class Act is pointing out, that's not really correct. The funky looking LM002 sold between 1986 and 1993 could probably be considered Lambo's first SUV, although some might call it a truck, but still a good catch by Class Act and several others. Chuck Grenchy has a question about the new Chevy Trailblazer. He asks, does the Trailblazer replace the Trax or is it an additional model? Well, Chevy is keeping the Trax for now and the Trailblazer will slot between the Trax and the Equinox. And for those of you keeping track, the Trailblazer makes six utility vehicles in Chevy's lineup and seven if you include the Bolt. Here's a comment from Cuomo G that flat out just made us laugh and we thought we'd share it. Hope I read this in the right tone. Sporty versions of a sport utility vehicle? You don't say! Soon there's going to be luxury versions of luxury vehicles and economy versions of economy cars. <laughs> Makes us laugh every time. We want to thank you for that. And last but not least, Bob Wilson is helping us promo our own shows. He says, Thursday's Autoline After Hours looks pretty good. Sandy Monroe from Monroe and Associates, Frank Marcus from Motor Trend, Gary Vasslash from Automotive Design and Production, and John McRoy, Autoline.tv. Now is a good time to submit questions to viewer mail at Autoline.tv. Well, Bob, couldn't have said it better ourselves. Thanks. Autoline Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires. Your journey, our passion. Well, here's yet another Israeli startup that's come up with some cool technology. UVI is the name of a company that started out developing scanners for security checkpoints to detect terrorist bombs attached to the undersides of cars. But they realized their scanners could also detect oil leaks, rust, dents, and damage. So they set to work to develop a version that automakers could use to look for defects in vehicle assembly. Now Skoda, Daimler, and Honda use their technology, while Volvo and Toyota like it so much that they invested in the company. One popular application is in paint booths, where the scanners can detect dirt or smudges with resolution that goes down to half a millimeter. UVI claims that one OEM was able to increase its paint shop throughput by four times because the system is so much faster than human inspectors. They say that hydrogen fuel cells are the powertrain solutions of the future, and always will be. But even though fuel cells are a long way off from going mainstream, more and more companies are getting involved. The governments of South Korea and Japan are pouring a lot of money into development. A few weeks back, we reported that Hyundai plans to have 200,000 fuel cell systems in vehicles and for power generation by 2030. And now the German supplier Scheffler is throwing its hat into the ring. It's joining the Hydrogen Council, which is based in Belgium and has members from 81 companies from the transport, energy, and industrial sectors. Scheffler is supplying bipolar plates, which require precise forming and thin layer coating, which go onto the fuel cell stack. Speaking of fuel cells, Honda and Isuzu are joining forces to study the use of hydrogen power in heavy-duty trucks. As part of the two-year deal, Isuzu will test Honda's fuel cell system, which was developed for passenger vehicles, in its commercial trucks. Fuel cells for passenger vehicles are still very expensive, but Honda and Isuzu believe fuel cells 
can be cost competitive for heavy duty trucks that travel longer distances. Electric cars can be far cleaner than cars powered by internal combustion engines, but it also depends how you're generating the electricity. Richard Hinton, one of our viewers from Australia, sent us this picture of an EV charging station. Look closely and you'll see that it's powered by a diesel generator. Hey, we know we're still in the early EV game, but in this case, it would be more efficient to simply have a car with a diesel engine. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.